Hello guys, my name is Trollface the Man, and I am redoing this video as a remake of an old video that though it has been decently successful, was of poor quality and should have had more focus on safety measures being outlined directly in the video. So the first thing I'm going to say in this video is that it is mainly for demonstrational or educational purposes only. Though most of it will be structured like a tutorial, you should not try this yourself at home unless you fully understand any and all safety concerns with making it. The reason this video is being made is mainly for people who make their own fireworks or model rocket engines, or people who might need unreacted aluminum powder for experiments such as thermite or other reactions. Or people have heard about the process online and want to try it at home without fully understanding how to do so or especially any risk involved which could lead to injuries or worse that I hope this video can help prevent. Either by educating the individuals about the risk, teaching them to do it safely, or by simply demotivating anyone who might decide to do it unsafely. Once again, unless you follow all safety concerns listed in this video, do not try it, otherwise it could result in serious injury, property damage, or even worse, which I'm just going to say it now, I am not responsible for. With that out of the way, let's get to the actual video. In this video today, I will show you a process of how I make dark aluminum powder that can be used in pyrotechnics or certain chemical reactions. All I need to do this is aluminum foil, thinner is better, and a ball mill or rock tumbler along with a handful of glass marbles and a pinch of charcoal powder. A blender is also highly recommended or at least a pair of scissors to cut the aluminum foil up into small pieces if I don't have a blender I could use. Alright, let me show you how. As you can see, I have my blender here and I'm going to start feeding in pieces of aluminum foil and slowly grind it up. This process is to make the ball milling later on go quicker, though once again if I didn't have a blender or coffee grinder to do this then I'd probably have to fall back onto a pair of scissors. I would like to point out that in my last video many people recommended to use a fine diamond cut paper shredder. I can't say if that works well or whether or not it can ruin your shredder so if you do try that, you do so at your own risk. This is where I will talk about the first safety measure that should be undertook. While grinding up this in a blender, it will produce fine aluminum or aluminium particles, pronunciation differences depending on where you are from. These particles will float around the air, just waiting to be sucked up into somebody's lungs. This is very, very bad. For one, no foreign substances, especially dust of any kind, should enter the lungs, otherwise it can cause a number of problems such as difficulty breathing, or even strangulation of lung tissue that can blister and possibly cause a pulmonary edema, which is when your lungs fill with fluid and it can eventually cause you to drown. But beyond that, aluminum has been shown to have possible links to the development of Alzheimer's, so it is best to avoid getting it into your system if at all possible. Though a small amount of dust won't honestly hurt you, the effects can be cumulative, so always wear a dust mask or be somewhere outside and with the wind to your back when you open the blender top. In other words, I quote a once famous philosopher, Aluminum smoke, don't breathe this. But there is one other hazard I wish to bring to light. Though it might seem odd, but aluminum is actually highly flammable, even explosive if given the right fineness and aeration. That is because like iron and many other metals that can spark when cut or struck, it is known as being pyrophorbic. In other words, it can ignite spontaneously in contact with air so long as it has enough surface area to rapidly oxidize. We won't be getting the particles that fine, but the dust floating around the air can still ignite and deflagrate or even explode if subjugated to an open flame or stray spark in a phenomenon known as a dust explosion. So before opening up your blender lid to add more aluminum foil or to take out aluminum you have thus far ground up, I suggest you let the blender cup sit undisturbed for at least 30 seconds to let any aluminum dust settle before opening. After I have ground up a goodly amount of foil into what appears to be a coarse aluminum sand, I will take a noodle strainer with holes about the size of medium sand particles and use it to filter out all of the bigger pieces of aluminum that can still be ground down further. This is technically an unnecessary step, but will help me ensure that I will get a rather consistent, modestly big starting mesh size to mill down. I would not recommend going much smaller than a fine sand in a blender due to the pyrophorbic properties of aluminum I mentioned earlier. In other words, if you try and grind it too small in the blender, it might self-ignite the aluminum, which is very bad. The rest of the process is sort of a rinse and repeat. 
Grind up further any aluminum that doesn't make it through the strainer or isn't as fine as you like, add more aluminum to the blender as necessary, and so forth. This is what I will be working with. As you can see, the particles are a good size in my opinion to start milling. So now that we have our sort of aluminum sand, we are just going to add it to the grinding barrel of our mill. But we first need to add a grinding media to actually pulverize the aluminum into a powder. My best find so far has been standard glass marbles. They are cheap and they don't spark so they shouldn't cause a spontaneous combustion unlike iron or steel ball bearings which might spark while milling which could ignite the aluminum powder and end your day on a very bad note. Now one thing I get asked a lot is whether or not you can use lead ball bearings instead of marbles. Simple answer is no and I will explain why. Lead is 1.5 on the Mohs scale of hardness, while aluminum is a 2 through 3. That means aluminum is 1 fourth harder to twice as hard as lead, so basically trying to use lead to grind up aluminum is comparable to using copper to grind up steel. It just doesn't work well. Though I'm not saying it won't grind up the aluminum eventually, but the aluminum particles also grind up your lead ball bearings quite a bit in the process and contaminate your product with lead dust, which is no bueno. That aside, we'll want a container about half full with our grinding media, in this case the marbles. Then we'll want our aluminum sand to just barely sit under where the marbles come up to. About one third to one half of our container should be air to allow things to sufficiently tumble around which is what actually lets it grind it up. I add in my aluminum sand into the mill container and tap it so it settles down. I do this while roughly measuring how much I have put into it which comes down to 1 and 1 fourth cup in this case. A little more packing down and I remove some of the marbles as necessary. This looks to be around a nice level. Keep in mind you might need to take out or add more marbles later on during the milling process. Now the reason why we measured how much aluminum we put in there is because for about every 1 cup of aluminum sand we put in you should add about 2 tablespoons of charcoal powder in there. This charcoal powder will coat the granules during the milling and help prevent oxidization during the process. This is good because what makes this dark aluminum powder so reactive is the fact that it is, for the most part, unoxidized. And when sufficient heat is applied, it burns off the carbon coating and allows the aluminum underneath to oxidize extremely rapidly, which generates a ton of heat and a bunch of light. But if we don't add this charcoal, the aluminum will oxidize more while milling and produce a product that is of inferior quality. In other words, it will contain more non-reactive aluminum oxide instead of just fine aluminum powder. I add in about a tablespoon and a half, but to be more accurate it should be about 2.5-5% through charcoal to aluminum by weight, which in all honesty I recommend a lot more than going by volume. Now I do know I said that you should add in 2 tablespoons per cup and I came to that conclusion after I already did this initial one, so I put in a little bit less than I should have. Once that is done, you can put it on your mill. This process will take a few days at least, and I typically let it run for around a week and a half before I am satisfied with its fineness. But here is yet another safety precaution you need to take very seriously. You have to open your milling container at least once a day or preferably twice a day with at least 8 hours of milling in between. Otherwise what can happen is the aluminum you are milling can consume all the oxygen in the milling container as new surface areas are exposed on the granules. This slow oxidization is harmless, but if there is no oxygen in the container for several days and suddenly you open the container and let oxygen in, what can happen is it rapidly bonds with the exposed aluminum to create aluminum oxide. This generates a lot of heat, enough to light your aluminum pile on fire and just about anything else it touches. Plus, if you have a plume of dark aluminum dust hanging about the air around you, that can also light, causing a big and bright fireball, the likes of which can give you second degree burns and blind you just from the amount of radiation it produces in close quarters. On top of that, if you are actually in the fire, well, I'm sure you could just imagine. I will try and show this concept here by taking some dark aluminum powder dust that I made and putting it in a spoon and lighting it on fire which admittedly doesn't do much while it's just sitting there, but as I expose it to a large amount of oxygen, by tossing the dust into the air, it ignites into a big and blindingly bright fireball. Hence why I'm wearing the welding goggles, which even still with them on, it leaves tracers in my vision. 
If I slow down the clip a bit, you can really see just how bright this gets. It literally lit up the area several blocks around me. And though it might seem bright on camera, it has auto exposure on it, so in all reality, it is much brighter than the footage you are viewing here, which is saying a lot. Do not try this at home. Back to the main point, neglecting to air out your mill at least once a day has been the mistake of many pyrotechnic wannabes and professionals alike who have experienced much grievance from milling aluminum or especially magnesium haphazardly. So with this I will say once again, I am in no way responsible for the information you use in this video and hold no liability for what you might do with it or any injuries or damages that may occur. I recommend you only do this if you really know what you are doing and fully understand any risk. Also don't forget to wear a respirator during any steps that the aluminum dust may find its way into the air. Here we are, some more photos of the various stages of the milling process. Now contrary to my warning, you actually can mill quite a lot quicker using steel slingshot ammo. You can do this by milling normally for the first few days and testing daily a small sample to see if the aluminum is reactive enough for it to catch fire. But the key thing is, if you do use steel ball bearings, the moment it is reactive enough to even barely self-substantiate a flame, you switch over to glass marbles to finish the milling process. Also, if using steel or iron ball bearings, you must make sure they are completely clear of rust, otherwise the rust particles can provide an oxidizer for the aluminum to light with, in literally the same reaction as a disproportionate thermite. So once again, if you do mill with steel ball bearings, only do so till the aluminum powder becomes reactive, then switch over to glass marbles to finish. This can save you a couple of days, but is more risky. Don't say I didn't warn you, and don't try it unless you understand the risk. A good indication that the aluminum is close to finishing is when it starts to stick to the side of the milling barrel, like so. And if you look at it, it's almost the consistency of flour. You can mill farther than this, but eventually the aluminum will just combust instantly in contact with air, so I do not recommend going much farther than this. As you can see, if I press a spoon down on the aluminum, it will pack a bit and make a smooth surface. This is unlike if it wasn't milled enough, in which case the granules would just simply push out of the way of the spoon and not pack at all. So this jar is about how much I got from the batch I made in this video. In all fairness, it was about one fourth of the way full first, but still if you minus that, that's quite a lot of dark aluminum powder. In this other jar here, I have some extra aluminum that I milled first using steel ball bearings, then, like I said, switched over to marbles as soon as the powder started to react at all when exposed to a flame. Once again, not the way I recommend doing this. This however has more charcoal added to it, probably close to double, so I will have to test that out too. Here's both the powders. First up, let's do the marble aluminum with less charcoal added to it. I'm just going to light it with a match. Remember, this is just the dark aluminum powder I milled with no oxidizers mixed in. Wow, it's bright enough to leave a temp dark spot in your vision, along with kicking off a tremendous amount of heat. Now let's move on to the one that has about twice as much charcoal and was milled using a ball bearings first, then marbles to finish it off. This one is significantly harder to start up. I cut out a few failed attempts, but when it does go up, it goes up a lot more aggressively. Most of the sparks you see are probably carbon granules being carried away by convection and burning as they do so. Once again, this is why I recommend you measure out your charcoal powder by weight instead of volume, as volume can vary extremely from one mesh size to another. And lastly, here's just some footage I took at night showing the amount of light this powder kicks off. This is just a small tablespoon worth of powder, and is about as bright as a large bonfire. This stuff is pretty amazing. 
Well, there you have it. My process for how I make a dark aluminum powder at home with nothing more than aluminum foil and charcoal. This can be used to make flash powders, sometimes used in model rocket engines, and certain chemical reactions. I hope you guys like the video, and if you do, I kindly request that you hit the like button to show it, and subscribe if you haven't already. Also drop me a comment if you feel like it, and have any suggestions or questions. And if you enjoy the video and want to support future projects like this, I ask you either check out my Patreon, or you click the support my channel button, typically below my video, and donate a buck or two. It really does help. I would also like to thank the awesome individuals who have already done this. I might not know who you are, but you guys are amazing. Thank you guys very much for watching, and bye!